Hello, we are going to be working on topic 6.6, .6, applying properties of definite integrals. Um, the first thing we are going to do is open the notes back up. And then we are going to write, of course, our name on the top of the page. So your name, not my name. All right, so the essential question is how do you use the properties of definite integrals? And we're gonna actually use the properties in two different ways. So we're gonna use the properties of definite, we're gonna basically just use the properties of definite integrals. And then I can calculate a definite integral using areas, which we've been kind of working on, but this is the official, we're gonna use areas day. So the following properties of definite integrals are a big part of calculus. Um, so some things you need to know is that f and g are integratable on a closed interval a to b and k is a constant, meaning it's a number. Then the function k times f and f plus g plus or minus g are integratable on the closed interval. So as long as we have that they can be integrated, we can integrate a constant times it and we can integrate um, them added together. So the constant multiple property says, basically, if I have a number on the inside, I'm allowed to bring that number to the outside of the integration sign. Um, if we are adding two functions together, we are allowed to add them together and add or subtract them together separately um, to get them integrated. Um, the additive interval property says that um, if I have an interval, and um, I need to split it up to another interval, I can do that and split the function up um, into two different intervals and integrate it in two separate, step, separate intervals. Um, definition of two special definite integrals. So we saw this one last year. When we go from A to A, we know that we get zero. So these numbers match. We know when we integrate, we get zero. And then we know we want this when we have the smaller number on the bottom in order to swap these two numbers we know we need to um, have a negative and typically we want the smaller one on the bottom so that's when we do that swap all right so we're going to try a few of these um they don't really give us functions but they gave us some information about functions i know in this one that from one to three my function equals 10 if i can just get that function so i'm going to use the additive property to separate this integral so I know I'm integrating from 1 to 3 of f of x dx, and I'm going to add that to the integral from 1 to 3 of 6 dx. Well, I know that this is exactly this, so I get to substitute in the 10. So I'm plugging the 10 in for that. When I integrate 6, I know I get 6x, and it's for, I have to plug in from 1 to 3. So I've got 10 plus 6 times 3 minus 6 times 1. So 6 times 3 is 18 minus 6 times 1 is 6. So 10 plus 12, which is going to be 22. All right, on the next piece, I have from negative 2 to 5 of 3f of x minus g of x dx. Um, I've got some interesting things. Notice I know something about from negative 2 to 3, and then I know something about 5 to 3. Um, I know something about negative 2 to 5, but that's for the g of x. I kind of, I'm kind of previewing what's going on here. I don't like the order that that's in, so I am going to choose to flip it and make it negative. So what that's really going to do is it's going to make that a negative 3. So when I have, um, and then I'm going to bring this to the front. I'm going to bring this over. Nope, it's going to stay a negative 3. When we flip it, we just switch it to, ah, I know what happens. I know what my algebra is, where my algebra is wrong. So I'm going to flip it. That puts a negative out front. And then to solve it, I'm going to take that negative to the other side. And that makes it negative 3. All right. Now we're ready to break this up. I've got all the information I need to break this up. So I'm going to break it into negative 2 to 5. I'm going to pull this 3 out in front, 3f of x dx. And then I'm going to subtract from negative 2 to 5 of g of x dx. Well, I definitely know this 
is equal to negative 4. Okay, so I can definitely substitute in the negative 4 for that, so minus negative 4. Then the 3 is just going to hang out in front. I am going to have to break this up. Notice I can go from I have to go from negative 2 to 5. I don't have that. But I do know from negative 2 to 3, and then I know from 3 to 5. So I'm going to break it into those two intervals. So negative 2 to 3 of f of x dx plus from 3 to 5 of f of x dx. Now I'm going to substitute those values in. So I know that, let me find a color I haven't used yet. I know that from negative 2 to 3 is 6. So we've got 3 times 6 plus, and then I know from 5 to 3 is negative 3. So I'm going to go plus negative 3. And then I've got double negative is positive 4. So let's see, 6 minus 3 would be 3. So I have 3 plus 3 plus 4. So I'm seeing 6 plus 4, which is 10. I didn't do that right, did I? I have a typo. Let's try that again. It's This is supposed to be 3 times 3 plus 4. 3 times 3 is 9 plus 4 is 13. 